I've come across a ton of videos talking about tutorial hell and ways to escape it. But most of them turned out to be a lot of fluff and 10 plus minutes of holding your hand trying to make you feel better. And I don't mean to talk bad about these channels. I myself watch them for my daily dose of motivation and I'm very grateful that they exist. But I do believe that in this case they fail to give actionable things that you can do to improve your learning speed and capabilities, aka escape tutorial hell. But first, what even is tutorial hell? Tutorial hell means being stuck in a cycle of watching tutorials without being able to apply that knowledge outside of said tutorial. And this is mostly due to two specific things. One, failing to absorb knowledge from tutorials due to the lazy nature of human brain. And two, failing to apply and solidify the absorbed knowledge. The way we are going to proceed is to quickly explain these two problems and then I'll give you actionable ways to fix or mitigate them. Without wasting any time, let's dive straight into the first problem. The human brain is by design lazy. It's very important to understand that your brain is the absolute king when it comes to saving resources. And so, he will take the easy route every time he can. In our case, that means that when you follow a tutorial, it is very easy to fall in a kind of autopilot mode. You see code, you copy code. You see code, you copy code. And before you know it, hours have passed, your tutorial project works, but you have no idea of how and why. So, how do you stop your brain from entering that autopilot mode? Well, you have to make your life harder. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And you start by renaming and changing everything. What I mean by that is that every time the tutorial instructs you to create an object, script or variable, you make sure to name it differently. If he creates a script called character controller, you call it player controller. If he sets a float value to two, you set it to three. If he calls a function jumping function, you call it jumper. Because if all the names and values are different than from the tutorial, you are forced to actually keep track of what is done. You need to actually remember where you've put stuff and how you've named it. This makes it so that your brain actually has to track the way the code works because if it didn't, you wouldn't be able to follow along with the tutorial. And yes, this will lead to errors, bugs, and lots of frustration. But this is actually a very good thing because this will not only teach you why certain decisions were made in the tutorial, but also the frustration facing these problems will lead to your brain anchoring that knowledge so that you never have to feel this painful frustration ever again. Because if there's one thing our brain hates more than anything else, it's pain and frustration. The second thing you should do is to incorporate your own ideas into your tutorial project. For example, when I first started to learn game development, I followed a tutorial on how to get the ball to roll around. This led me to wanting to create a cool platformer with that ball. And so I introduced a jump mechanic and a dash mechanic and even a grappling hook system. These things weren't in the original tutorial, so I had to follow other tutorials to make those ideas work. But I ran into quite a lot of issues because these other tutorials weren't meant to be used with a ball, but an actual character mesh. And this forced me to having to figure out how all these other mechanics work to properly integrate them into my existing project. This process of incorporating new ideas into your tutorial project will take you out of your comfort zone, forcing you to gain a better understanding of how these different systems work and play together, but also train your brain to stay creative and once again out of autopilot mode. Now let's move on to the second problem we need to fix, and that is failing to apply and solidify the absorbed knowledge. We already concluded that one of the big drawbacks of your brain being so well optimized is that it leads to laziness, but there is another. Your brain always adapts to your current needs, meaning that it will delete or rather compress the things you don't use regularly to make space for more regularly used skills. In our case, this means that if you learn something new, you need to use that a few times in different memorable ways to solidify its importance in your brain. Basically telling your brain to put this in the do not forget folder. The first actionable thing you need to do here is to apply what you've learned by redoing it. The most obvious way of doing that is to simply repeat what you did in the tutorial, but without the actual tutorial. But I found that incredibly dull and boring. So, oh, 
I recommend game jams. More precisely, I recommend you join a game jam with the condition of using whatever system or mechanic that you've taught yourself with a previously followed tutorial. Not only will this force you to adapt the system to fit the game jam's theme, but also once again force you to step outside of your comfort zone, which will make this particular system a lot more memorable for your brain. Let me give you my own experience as an example. After my first month of learning game development, I decided to join a game jam. Right before the game jam, I had followed a tutorial on how to create an endless runner. And so I decided that for this game jam, I'll make an endless runner and somehow force the theme into it. The theme turned out to be magnetic. My implementation of that is that I made my own gravity system that the player has to switch around to move the metallic ball to avoid obstacles while endlessly moving forward. This forced me to drastically change the endless runner project I've made using the tutorial, solidifying everything I've learned with that said tutorial. To this day, the knowledge of how to make an endless runner system is still very clear to me, even though I didn't make any game with that mechanic since then. And this was two years ago. And finally, the last actionable tip I have for you is to teach what you learn. No, no, I don't mean that you need to start making YouTube tutorials, even if that technically would be a valid way of doing this. But I want you to go and explain what you did and learn to someone else. Specifically, I want you to dumb it down so that anyone, even peasant non-game devs, get it. In my case, I started my YouTube channel documenting my game dev journey. And in each video, I explain in non-developer terms what I did and how it works. This helped me solidify my knowledge by memorizing and illustrating the concept of what I've learned instead of trying to learn by heart the whole process. Now, in your case, you don't need to start a YouTube channel. You can explain your stuff to anyone. This can be a friend, a family member, or some random guy you just met on Discord. But my biggest recommendation is that you do a weekly post where you explain the concept of your system or prototype you made, and you either post it on Reddit, or ideally join our Discord server where I made a completely new channel for this exact purpose, so that you don't feel awkward explaining out of the blue your system to some random subreddit. Anyways, hope this helps. And if it did, then maybe this video will help you even more so just put your mouse on it and 